Are you ready to Sundance? Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I am Chris Gore, joined as always by Anthony Ray Bench. And this is this is a very special episode of the Film Threat Podcast. We were in Park City, Utah for the Sundance Film Festival, and I'm joined by well, the whole team is out here. We've got we've got eight people from Film Threat that have made their way here. Our video team, and then we've also got, of course, Norman Gidney. Say hello, Norm. Boo. <laughs> it's me, Norm, from Horror Buzz. <laughs> Norm Gidney from uh, Horror Buzz. If you read HorrorBuzz.com or if you read FilmThreat.com, you'll read his reviews. And, of course, we're also joined by... Dante James. Dante James, also part of the West Coast group here for Film Threat. We're here uh, at the Sundance Film Festival. And this is for Anthony and I. It's the second time Anthony's gone. I'm round two. Round two. And then for Norm and Dante, your first time. Yep. Great first time. And, and w- so far, the experience. So c- cold. <laughs> This is T-shirt weather for yeah, me. No, no kidding. It's actually, it's actually nice. It's nice. I'm literally a T-shirt. Well, I mean, so far, I mean, we just got here, so we haven't seen much of the festival yet, but uh, we're all excited about it. Well, this is our preview show, so just so you know what you guys are going to be hearing, um, over the next 10 days of Sundance, you'll be getting interviews. I'll be out in the field doing interviews. Um, we're, you're going to be hearing daily reviews, so there'll be a roundup of reviews from our other writers, uh, Bradley Gibson. And then also Matt Passantino are here. They're actually off at a movie right now. Uh, they're at the Eccles Theater uh, to see one of the opening night films uh, here, here in Park City at Sundance. So every day, check, listen to the, to, to the podcast, and you'll get reviews and interviews um, right here from Park City. Uh, we were fortunate enough, actually Anthony and I were fortunate enough, to actually see a couple films before we made it out here, which I don't know if we can necessarily give full reviews, but maybe some impressions of a couple of the films that we saw. So, Anthony? You want me to start off? Yeah, please. Sure. Uh, I saw The Magic Life of V. It's a uh, Finnish film, and the weird thing about it was I was watching it thinking it was a, a narrative, and it was beautifully shot. The characters were interesting. Turns out it was a fucking documentary all along. It... <laughs> It surprised me. Um, it's basically about this um, this girl. Her name is Vera, but her character name is V because she's a LARPer. LARPing stands for live action role playing. Um, it's basically a bunch of people go out with fake weapons and battle and do stories. It's like a live action version of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, she's using it as therapy to cope with some traumatic stuff that happened in her life. And... Uh, it was it was really good. The only gripe I have with it was it starts out and you have no idea what's going on. I didn't read a synopsis or anything. No, but that's so first yeah. of all, just thought, that's actually part of the fun of going to Sundance is you might read a synopsis or just know the title of a movie and mm-hmm. and, and you really don't know a lot about it. I yeah. think that movies today are mostly ruined by the trailers and the oversaturated marketing. Um that, that just sort of, you kind of know everything that's going to happen. That's a great thing about seeing films at a festival like Sundance. You just, no, I, I, looks. I agree with that. But my gripe with, with it is more of like, you know, how the story plays out. Um, because it is a documentary, like it takes a while for you to figure out like what the documentary is about. You're just following these people doing weird shit. Like there's one thing where like they play summon a demon and I'm like watching it and I'm like, are they actually summoning a demon? Is this like a fantasy movie? Because again, I didn't know it was a documentary. Whereas, you know, and then they just play with like fixed words. And I was like, okay, is it a movie about LARPing? Like, are they going to kind of blend the, the two and kind of have like a, you know, oh, it's fantasy, but it has, you know, like realistic stuff. It, there's this one scene where it legitimately looks like the indie film version of Hogwarts they're all wearing robes and like they're in this like really like small fucking school and like doing like spells and shit. And I was just like, okay, like I have no idea it once the movie like kind of presents itself out in the open and it's just like, this is what it's about. It's interesting. It does not look like a documentary at all, but it's, it's a beautiful film. I recommend it. All right. Well, I, I saw a film, also a documentary. It was called, Anthropocene, the human epoch. And it's kind of like, I mean, I, I guess the best thing I could compare it to is something like a Koyana, Koyana Scotsi or a, um, one of those films where 
they don't really give you necessarily the context. They kind of tell you like, um, and it's beautifully shot. This, this documentary basically throws you into these things where you see Earth's resources being cultivated, but you see it from all over the world. So you're in Germany with one of the largest actual construction machines that exists. I mean, this thing is like four stories tall with like a, a bunch of workers on it. It looks like a giant machine out of Dune. That's the only thing I could compare it to, but it's a real machine sort of carving up the earth. Then we go to Africa where we're seeing like <laughs> logging, but like what was frightening about it is seeing this logging done and this whole town kind of comes out, but you see no safety goggles, no safety, you know, a lot of the people working in this, in this factory have like no shoes. And it cuts to different parts of the world showing, it shows um, elephant tusks uh, that are being, um, well, they're, they're basically trying to stop, you know, uh, the harvesting of elephant tusks. And they bring them to a place where they burn them. They're trying to end this practice. So it's, it's just sort of seen throughout the world um, that kind of show how Earth's resources are cultivated. In a way, it's kind of like, um, I feel like we have maybe too far of a distance between things that reach us, say, in metropolitan areas, and, and we don't really know. We're like, how do you get a hamburger? I mean, there's nothing really gross in this documentary, but I will say that as someone who loves a delicious hamburger, I don't really necessarily want to see the gory details of how they carve up the cows with chainsaws, but this gave you some perspective and some appreciation for, wow, these are just like, it was workers all over the world in jobs that aren't normally shown. And it, but what was weird about it was how beautifully shot it was. It was just, it was amazing. And it's, it's, um, it's from Canada and it was, it was, uh, it was, I, I, I don't know, just the people that put this together really put, I mean, it, it does have a, a screenwriter, Jennifer Boschwell. And it, it, so there's, there's something about like the way that they put it together. It's hypnotic. It's, it's like one of those, you ever go see IMAX movies? I just saw one um, called <coughs> Volcanoes 3D that's all about volcanoes. And, and I don't know, I just, I love those IMAX movies that are just about nature and you just like get a glimpse into something. And that's kind of what this documentary was about. It just gave you some, some, a glimpse into a kind of uh, uh, things that we don't necessarily see about how the earth's resources are cultivated and utilized. So, well, I want a hamburger now <laughs> and I also <laughs> want a chainsaw so I can chainsaw some cows. That sounds like fun. Oh. Mm. <laughs> but I, think, I, I think it'd be really interesting mm. because I do think that the crowd at Sundance, you know, tends to be, it's a, you know, it's, it's, Intelligentsia, right? The intellectual crowd. I don't know. That yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to turn up as as Sundance. We're right, pretentious right. as fuck. <laughs> no, 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 but no. But what I mean is, is that they'll get a glimpse into seeing a lot of how this, like, I mean, I actually worked in a couple factories when I lived in Detroit. Like, it, I was doing temp work, and the temp agency would send me to stuff, and it was horrible. I only did this for like six months. But just I just didn't have a job. Was it like all the jungle and like were you sweeping in trails and stuff? No, no, not that bad. I didn't work anywhere <laughs> like in food processing, but I worked at like this photographic plant that worked that um, did work for the main auto companies. So um, just I, I don't know. Just sometimes when I, uh, I'll talk to someone, it's like, oh, you don't even know anybody who's ever worked in a factory or or done like hard labor or and this kind of gives you this glimpse into it. I almost think that the movie is too beautiful. Like it's so pretty. But I, I would highly recommend seeing it, um, especially if you're here at Sundance and listening to this podcast. Now, we haven't seen films yet. I mean, it is the first day of Sundance, but we're all looking forward to movies. So I want to ask you, Norm, what are you most looking forward to seeing at Sundance? Uh, the Nightingale. The, oh, yeah. I know. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> this is, the, this is uh, Gen Jennifer Kent. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's her follow-up to The Babadook. Now, oh, nice. full disclosure... Yeah. I hated the Babadook. Really? Wait, Babadook. how did you hate the Babadook? Let let me let me be clear. It's a damn good movie. But I hated that motherfucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the kid. And I think you're supposed to. Hate mm, you know, there's there's a point when you've put the audience to, through like a little too much. And and <laughs> and uh, you know, I was like, "Okay, I'm done with this child." And then the movie flips and then it becomes tolerable again but you know regardless that movie is damn good i did not like it and i'm comfortable saying it but that's, that's her yeah and uh but she's she knows what she's doing behind the camera 
and I can't wait to see what she does next. Another one is uh, Memory, that documentary on Alien. Yeah. Another one is uh, uh, The Lodge. Then there's... Well, we, should, we should talk about Memory. Memory, it's the origins of Alien. It's about Dan O'Bannon's abandoned script that he wrote for the original. He didn't know he was really doing Alien. He was just doing this movie, but he came up with The Chestburster. From this, like, he had like a 27 page script that he stopped working on. I'm um, actually, uh, just so you know, we're actually going to interview the director of Memory, uh, The Origins of Alien, Alexander uh, Philippe O. Felipe, which, uh, if you look at his filmography, he directed The People vs. George Lucas. Which you were in. Phenomenal. Which, okay, I, I'm, I'm in there in a little bit, oh, right. but, but that movie, it's sort of misnamed. That movie is more of a love letter to George Lucas than anything else. Um, and it kind of focuses on the fans that didn't like the prequels. Of which I may have been one, but but so so I can't, that's why I can't wait to see Memory because it's really made by uh, uh, Alexander, who's a film professor and also a legit movie geek. Yeah, and yeah. we might be able to catch that one tonight. Uh, there's a possibility. So it's later tonight. Yeah, I think that like you guys are gonna go, Anthony, you and and Norm are gonna try and check. And it. then there's right, there's little monsters it. with uh, Lu- Lupita Nyong'o. Oh, Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I just I can't. There's there's a slew of other, you know, and then like also because uh, working with Film Threat Two, I'm able to see movies that are not horror. Right. And uh, you guys were talking about some movies that you had seen. I was able to catch one uh, before uh, called The Sharks from Argentina. Oh, tell us. About it, it. I totally dug it. Yeah. It was this really chill, slow moving. Uh, I hate the term coming of age because it's so trite. For sure. But but it's about this 14-year-old girl who is kind of coming into her own. And uh, she's she's bizarre. She's weird. And uh, she falls in love with this kid. And um, things don't go as planned. <laughs> and uh, she's cool. She's she's really cool. So, But the movie just takes its time and just lets you kind of observe these people and their, their nuances and their idiosyncrasies and... Uh, Keeps you entertained, and I loved it. I really loved it. Cool. Dante, what are you looking forward to here at Sundance? Um, there's definitely two. Number one is a movie called Mope, um, <laughs> which uh, stars a friend of me and Chris, uh, porn legend Annie Cruz. Um, and basically the movie is about, uh, well, for you, those who don't know, a mope in the porn industry or porn lingo is basically stands for a wannabe porn star. And this movie is about two male uh, Want to be porn stars? Uh, Tom Dong and Steve Driver, of course, that's their names. Um, <laughs> who go on a killing rampage with a sword, and this is based on a true story. So it happened in the San Fernando Valley. These two wannabe porn stars went on a fucking killing rampage with a sword. <laughs> um, so I have to see this movie <laughs> just just on that premise alone. I, say- I'm. I'm in. And just because you and I are friends with Annie, there's a really good chance she may show up on the podcast and talk to us about Mope. Yeah, because she will be there as well with us on uh, Sunday night. So I am looking extremely forward to that. And I I actually want to know if she was involved in that in any shape or form. Yeah, I mean, just having been in that world, I mean, she's no longer in the adult film. Right, right, yeah. She does does a radio show for Vivid on Sirius XM, and she she has a lot of podcasts as well. Yeah, she's very retired. A quick, quick shout out to our video team who actually posted an exclusive clip from Mope on the Film Threat YouTube channel. So if you go to the Film Threat YouTube channel, we actually have a lot of trailers from Sundance and, and movies playing Sundance and Slamdance, and we've we've gotten access to a couple of exclusive clips. So go to uh, go to YouTube and check out the Film Threat channel and subscribe. What exactly. was the other film you're looking forward to? I think I know what it is. Yeah, the other uh, film is definitely, for anyone who knows me, uh, you wouldn't be surprised by this, but it's the uh, Wu-Tang movie of, Mike, of Mikes and Men. And it's basically a documentary about uh, one of the greatest rap groups of all time, uh, the Wu-Tang Clan, who have uh, been around for like the past, uh, basically they started like in, 90, in 89, I believe. So uh, and they're still relevant to this day uh, in the rap game. So um, uh, I'm I'm extre- I'm very much hoping that I can get maybe like some FaceTime with RZA if he's here, who is uh, the leader of the Wu Tang Clan. Also, um, uh, the guy is a savant. Uh, he not only is a, a legend in rap, but uh, we're talking film scores, film director. Uh, if you've ever seen uh, uh, Man with the Iron Fist. He directed that kung fu movie, which is amazing, starring Russell Crowe and Lucy Liu. But um, yeah, anyway, I'm looking very forward to that as well. Uh, awesome, cool. And then uh, I, I, the, our, our video crew here, 
I got to give them a, a shout out. Bobby Schwartz, uh, who does our, our, our YouTube channel uh, graphics and uh, does the podcast. Walter Arias is here. He's, he's, he's also part of our video crew. We're also going to be doing some little video updates. So if you follow us on social media at Film Threat, you'll see some video updates. You're going to see uh, content that's on our YouTube channel that's exclusive, uh, a, 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 a lot of stuff. I'm, look, I'm also looking forward to, and I know that all of us, because we were talking about this movie earlier, Velvet Buzzsaw with Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm, I so cannot wait to see that movie. I mean, I know what's weird about it is I really want to see it here because I know the whole cast is going to be here, which is the fun part. I mean, I know that, like, I actually think Velvet Buzzsaw, like, premieres on Sunday or on Netflix in, this like, week. actually, it's, like, like next Soon. Friday. Yeah. I think I think it's really, before Sundance is over, it actually does premiere. But um, what's cool about it is is that seeing it here, you get to see it with the actors. It's a different context. They'll do a QA and a and it's a great way to kind of launch the awareness of a movie. I think a lot of people wouldn't know about Velvet Buzzsaw if they if they didn't, you know, get the press that they will invariably get out of Sundance. So what what other what films are you looking forward to, Anthony? Um I'm really looking forward to two of them. The first is the untitled uh The Amazing Jonathan documentary. I'm a big fan of The Amazing Jonathan. Uh for those that don't know, he's a comedian that does magic tricks and a lot of the magic tricks are kind of like major failures and it's it, he's he's incredible uh he had some kind of a heart condition where he was like on the verge of death and he made like a major comeback he was touring last year i don't know if he's touring this year um but it's uh produced and maybe directed i don't know um by um steve byrne a famous comedian um the other one is fighting with my family which is about uh the wwe wrestler page um, her family were all wrestlers. Uh, she tried to break into the business with her brother. Her brother didn't get to be a wrestler, but she became a mega star. She had to re retire recently. She got kicked in the fucking head and it was brutal. But, uh, Vince Vaughn is in it. Uh, Dwayne Johnson, the rock he's in it. He's executive producing it as well. Uh, Lena Headley, who I'm a big fan of. Uh, I'm, I'm a wrestling fan, so this is right up my alley. But this is what's interesting about Sundance. A lot of people who've never been here think, oh, Sundance is about all those art films and those really important documentaries. And yes, that exists. And there are a lot of um, documentaries that address social issues, that um, a lot of documentaries by a diverse and... Um, emerging voices but what's great about Sundance is I believe that Sundance especially if you go to the Egyptian and you see the midnight movies which is where we're going to see Mope uh, it, it, what's great about Sundance also is the fact that you know they're not too proud to show a documentary about wrestling or a, um, a narrative film that that's about a real event that from the ripped from the pages of the world of porn. I mean, it's like that's what's cool about it. I mean, and it's really so. I, I, that's why I think um, and Sundance has really done this for a long time. I mean, the Blair Witch Project premiered at Sundance at the Egyptian at a midnight screening. So I mean, that's why you're here, Norm, is to see anything horror and you know. Anything horror, anything LGBTQ queer cinema, yeah. uh, but anything good. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. because yeah. to me, to me, uh, or anything not so good. It's so much. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's fun seeing those disasters, you yeah. know. But the point is, I I want to see something like you guys were talking about earlier. You know, not knowing anything about the movie. I love going into a movie cold. Yeah, yeah, and, I agree and, with that completely. And just being like. What's what's gonna happen on the screen? Entertain me, and uh, a good fan, a good fan, a good film transcends genre, and and a good fan watches it. And a good fan, thank you, Bobby. That was such a sweet <laughs> save. Uh, but but he's a good boy. But but uh, no, you know, just to entertain me and try, and I can't wait to see what's out there. And then that that really is is like the the sense of surprise and discovery is really what comes up. Sunday, it's really sort of at, being the first film festival, first major film festival in the calendar year, kind of sets the tone for the rest of the year. A lot of a lot of film festival directors come here and then they they I mean festival directors come here to program their festivals in, you know, other parts of the country. Sort of, you know, your smaller mid-level festivals, they're here seeking out movies to play their festival, say, you know, in in April, May or June, whatever. They they're all here to check that stuff out. So, um we, we hope that you'll like stick with us 
and, and check out the podcast on a daily basis. You're, we're going to have surprises. We're probably going to have Annie Cruz, maybe some of the other cast members from Mope. Uh, we'll definitely be talking to some other filmmakers and directors. Uh, we are going to discover some movies, uh, so we hope you'll stick with us. A- a- any, any parting thoughts on our, our uh, Sundance 2019 preview festival, uh, festival preview? I'm a... Uh... I'm just excited. I'm excited. It's my first time. I've been wanting to come to Sundance for years now, and uh, I'm finally here. And uh, I just want to milk it. I just want to see everything, do everything. And, and, and you also want a computer that works. Yes, uh, yes. I've been having some issues, but don't, don't uh, give them a shout out. Don't, there's a there's a there's a computer. There, there's a certain brand I'm not going to mention. That's just <laughs> that's just shite. And uh, anyway, dude, you're getting a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! But uh, <laughs> so, look, computer problems aside, right. uh, I'm still excited. Well, I can't even believe we're recording this podcast. There have been so many problems in getting here. We have problems with getting our tickets. Problems with the one thing is no problems with like everyone at Sundance is great. Like the volunteers, everyone that we've dealt with, like in the press office, went to pick up our badges. Like that's the part. It's it's like you know the condo is not exactly what I was hoping for. We're kind of in close quarters. Here. Totally first world problems. The condo. I don't know. Okay, you're right. I'm gonna shut the. I'm I'm gonna shut up. But this, <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is gonna be like Big Brother at, at some point. At some point, someone's gonna crack. I'm gonna I'm gonna be that lady like banging pots and pans downstairs. You know, <laughs> I don't want to sleep because of y'all. Be like that. Okay, so now actually, I'm gonna build an igloo and just sleep out in that. <laughs> okay, so, so now it's time uh, for we're all of us actually. You guys are taking off to see a movie. You, Anthony and Norm, I think you guys are heading off to a film. We're actually gonna head off to Main Street. And I'm going to record a tour of Main Street and give you my film festival tips. That'll be one of our one of our episodes that, that we'll throw out there. You should write a book about that. I already did. I wrote a book about it, but it's but the, I mean I think the, I'm trying to remember when the last edition came out. Time for a new edition. I it's... am working on a new edition of the Ultimate Film Festival Survival Guide. Uh, I've got some other news about that, which I'll talk about later. Uh oh. Uh, but the thing is, is that like it's it's something that will transform. And yes, an updated edition of that book. We're actually going to go down Main Street, and we're going to record as we're walking up Main Street, and uh, give you a little tour in audio form, um, kind of like you're with us. Um, and the other things we haven't talked about, there are lounges and parties and all sorts of other distractions, which are a lot of fun, and I tend to check those out. So you're hearing my voice pre... This is at the beginning. It, I'm barely going to be able to talk, I think, by the end. Um, if, if things go well, I'll barely, barely be able to talk. Well, there should be that some sort of a, a drunk litmus test. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, what, some, like a phrase you have to say. Like <laughs> sober and then drunk. I, I, I don't know. We'll just sort of we'll create some sort we of... need a safe word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Banana. So, okay, so uh, thanks for listening. We're Film Thread on everything. Um, listen to the podcast every day from the Sundance Film Festival. We'll also be doing special reports from Slamdance. And everyone, let's let's get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here.